Hello everyone. In the previous video, we talked about a random variable that is independent. What if we have two random variables, x and y, and they are not independent? Then we will express the probability density function, and we call it now joint probability density function if it's continuous, or if x and y are discrete random variable, we call them joint probability mass function. And it is the probability x will have this value and y will have this value. As an example of the joint probability mass function, let's look at this table. This table basically is explaining a machine that make CD cover. The length x is here and the width is y here. And each one of them is a random variable, but not necessarily independent. So the machine, when it determines the length x, it may affect the y length. So there is variation. And the possible value for the random variable x are these values. 129, 130, 131. The possible values for the random variable y is these two values, 15 and 16. So if we are testing the machine, we made it to make maybe a thousand CD cover. And we noticed that the probability of a CD that have a length 129 and a width 15 is 0.12. That's mean out of 100, 12 will, of the CD cover will have these lengths. And 129 and 16, there is probability of 0.08. So this joint probability mass function, I can write it as follow. Probability x equal 129 and y equal 15 equal 0.12. So this is the joint probability mass function, which is this, pxy. If I add all these numbers, they will add up to 1, which is this equation. What if I want to find the marginal probability mass function, which is this one, the probability of the random variable x equals specific value, regardless of what is y. So if I want to find what's the probability x equal 129, so that will be the probability x equal 129 and y is 15 plus the probability x equal 129 and y 16. So that will be 0.12 plus 0.08. So that will be this probability plus this probability, and I get this one, 0.2. And the same thing if I want to find the probability x equal 130, it's this probability plus this probability, and I get 0.7. So this column is what we call the marginal probability mass function of the random variable x. And how do we find it? Is by this equation. So it's the summation of x with every single value of y. To get this one, I sum this. To get this one, I sum this, and so forth. How about if I want to find the marginal probability mass function for the random variable y. Now I need to find first what's the probability y equal 15 and the probability y equal 16 because this is the only two possible value for the random variable y. So then I will add these probabilities. The first one is the probability y equal 15 and x 129. The second one here y15 and x130 and so forth. So when I add them up, I will get 0.6. Now to find the probability y equals 16, it's I add all these possible probability and I will get 0.4. So now this one here is the marginal probability mass function of the random variable y. And that explains these equations. Now if the random variable are continuous, then it will be joint probability density function, and that would be f of x, y. Basically, this is will tell you how often x will have a specific value and y will have a specific value. So if this is 
a joint probability density function. By looking at this graph, I can tell that most of the time, this peak happened when x somewhere here and y somewhere here. So when y is minus 1 and x is minus 1, that will happen more often if I run the experiment and x can have value from minus 3 to 3, and y can have value from 3 to minus 3. If this is a joint probability density function, then the area under this must be 1. So that is this equation. So if I integrate the joint probability density function over all possible values of y and all possible values of x, and I get 1, then that's a joint probability density function. Now what happened if I want to find the probability that x will stay within a specific range and y will stay within a specific range? So for example, if I want to find the probability x will be in this range here and here where this is a and this is b. And I want to find what's the probability that y will stay in this range where this is c and this one is D. Then it will be the area under this joint probability density function in this range here. The area of the surface curve. And mathematically, this is what we said. What is the probability X will fall between A and B and the random variable Y between C and D? It's just the integral of the joint probability density function for the value of y from c to d and integrate the variable x from a to b, from a to b. Then you will get a fraction, maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and that will tell you the probability, how often x will fall in this range between a and b and y fall in the range between c and d. Now, if I want to find the marginal distribution of x and y, so I want to find basically the marginal density function of the random variable x, then I integrate this density function, f of x of y, for all possible values of y. An example, I want to know what is f of x when x between a and b. So I specify x here, a and b, then I will integrate this whole thing for all possible values of y. Just the same thing we did with the discrete random variable. If I want to find what is the probability y equal 16, I sum up x is 128, x is 130, x is 132. Same thing here. It's the summation of the joint probability density function for all possible value of y. That will give you f of x. Same thing if I want to find f of y, the marginal density function of the random variable y is just the integral of the joint probability density function for all possible value of x. And when you do this one, you will end up with this is x and here it will be f of x. And that could be something like this, depend on the distribution of the random variable x. Let's take an example. Assume that for a certain type of washer, both thickness and the whole diameter vary from item to item. So let's draw the washer. So we have a washer here and the thickness here and there is a hole here. Let X denote the thickness. So this is the thickness X in millimeter and let Y denote the whole diameter in millimeter. And this is Y. And X and Y are random variables. That means the value fluctuate for x between 1 and 2 and for y between 4 and 5. And since they gave us a joint probability density function, that means there is some relationship between them. So the machine maybe will make x 1.5 and y 4.5 more often than the rest. To find out, you have to plot this. Then the peak will show you which combination will be more often in this manufacturing of the washers. So now the question is the following. Find the probability that a random chosen washer has a thickness between 1 and 1.5 millimeter 
and the whole diameter between 4.5 and 5. So they want to find the probability x between 1 and 1.5 and y between 4.5 and 5. So they want this probability. From the definition here, it will be the integral of the joint probability density function 1 over 6 x plus y dx dy and x is from 1 to 1.5 and y from 4.5 to 5 and as I said it doesn't matter which one you integrate first x or y and if I do this one this will be 4.5 to 5 1 over 6 so I will do the integration with the random variable x first so that will be x squared over 2 plus y think of it as a fixed value so that would be y x evaluated from 1 to 1.5 dy and if I evaluate these 4.5 to 5 I take 1 6 out so then this will be 1.5 square over 2 plus y time 1.5 minus plug for x1 so that is 1 square over 2 plus plug for x1 y and this is dy and this is 1 over 6 4.5 5 0.625 plus 0.5 y dy now I integrate with respect to y so this will be 1 over 6 0.625 y plus 0.5 y squared over 2 evaluated from 4.5 to 5 and this is 1 over 6 and if you calculate these you should get 0.25 which is this one the second question is find the marginal probability density function of the thickness x so we want to find f of x here so that will be the integral of f of x of y for all possible value of y and the y range from 4 to 5 so that will be from 4 to 5 and this will be 4 to 5 marginal probability density function is this one so that will be 1 over 6 x plus y dy and when we integrate this one it will be 1 over 6 x y plus y square over 2 evaluated from 4 to 5 and this is 1 over 6 x plug for y 5 minus 4 plus plug for y 5 so that will be 25 over 2 minus 16 over 2 and this is 1 over 6 x plus 9 over 2 for all value of x between 1 and 2 and this is this one now if we try to plot this density function for the random variable x and x is from 1 to 2 if you plug here for x1 that will be 11 over 12 11 over 12 if you plug for x2 that will be 13 over 12 so that will be somewhere here so the probability density function of the random variable x is this one and if I calculate the area that means if I integrate these with respect to x from 1 to 2 I will get 1 and that will be this area and we can do the same thing to find the marginal probability density function of the random variable y and we will find it to be this one here so here instead of integrating with respect to y you will integrate with respect to x and the limit is here will be for x from 1 to 2 in the previous example 
the two random variable x and y are not independent so the machine when it make the washer thickness x and the hole diameter y they are related to each other it seems it make the higher the value the more often it make them now if the two random variables are independent and they're not related to each other then the join probability mass function or density function will equal the multiplication of the marginal probability mass function in this case or the marginal continuous density function. This is true only if the two random variables x and y are independent. Thank you for watching this video and next video will be about covariance.